Hey guys, today we're in Auckland City, it's my hometown, and we're gonna go meet up with a friend. He's actually a DJ, and back in the day, I used to go out clubbing, and he was my favorite DJ. And we're gonna meet up with him. We're gonna go to the clubs in Auckland that he used to DJ at, and the known clubs back through the 90s or the 2000s. So right now we, um, <laughs> right now we've, we've walked to where we were going to first go, which is this club, uh, originally called Course Lib slash The Box. Well, originally called The Siren. The Siren. And Club Mirage was yep. like one of those guys as before it became well known as The Box and Course Lib. Two, two venues down the same stairwell, one to the left, one to the right. Where's the door gone? So it was, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just been knocked down. Let's go look at it. Yeah, it was here. I think I knew that. I think when they, uh, I think there was a bit of, bit of, bit of hoo-ha. Yeah. This is where the club was. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll walk in because this looks like a car park, so it would be There's right. some stairs. There you go. Look at that. There's the steps. Oh my God. So, what uh, year did you start DJing here? Hello, stairs. Um, I would say I started doing the re Wednesday Night Retro here 1998. Yeah. Maybe 98. Took over from Wanda Lamore. Wanda Lamore had done a great job of creating this really cool retro night. And uh, I got a shot. I got a shot at doing it and uh, never looked back. It was great fun, unbelievable nights. So retro night was a huge thing for me. My entire 20s, every year, every uh, Wednesday. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was here and basically, you know, we would hang out. There was a line that went down the street all the way down to, um, uh, what's the name Vulcan. of that road? Vulcan Lane. Yeah. Uh, and it would start here. And it was a really cool bouncer called George. <laughs> I and, um, George, yeah, yeah it, it was kind of everyone knew him in Auckland. He's a really lovely guy, and you know we would sit out here and smoke cigarettes, and Vince would park his truck up here, and it was just a really cool social scene. And if that was maybe the the door into Celeb, that could well have been the door into Celeb. Yeah, that'll make sense because there's some more stairs that you'd step down yep. under the box dance floor. And where we are now was a thing called the Ice Box for a little while. There's a thing called the Ice Box, yep. which was another room to itself, which was a bit of a chill zone. Pinball machine about there usually bar here but yeah. no the box was an incredible nightclub not just for the wednesday oh. thing like it had low ceiling it was a real sound bunker oh. and the quality of sound in that was second to none it really hasn't been equal no know, in all it time. was an amazing um experience just because we also had lots of international djs and, and but it was a small club i mean it wasn't huge but yet you'd get kind of um acts from overseas wanting to just have a little party and there was a it few was, that came so, through here, It was right? so much in its infancy, though. Clubbing was, was really in its infancy. And you know, Simon Grigg, who owned the club and was responsible for many things, including the box being box and celeb being so, so successful, yeah. um, you know, people would come to town, like Ice-T would come to town and play, you know, do a concert. He'd come down and hang out here afterwards. Mick Hucknell came with Simply Red. He came and DJed here. U2 did their show, came down here and brought Paul Oakenfold with them, their DJ. He did a live set here. Like, the, the list goes on. I'm missing a few, I'm sure. But the list goes on. Chemical just, Brothers? I, Didn't know, they do, I think they did something here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, notori it was notorious for if someone cool was in town, they were coming here after they'd done their show. Right. So it was just that spot. Um, and and it, it ran for years. Out of that door, most mm. nights was coming jazz. People like Nathan Haynes and various other jazz aficionados were playing, as in DJing or playing as in live, jazz from behind that door. And from this door was coming usually house music. And at the top of that stairwell was a young man called Sawani. Oh. And he heard this combination of house beats and jazz <laughs> and put his own South Pacific flavor yeah. on it and, and the rest is history. Like, yeah. yeah, so Sawani was an amazing DJ. Uh, fortunately, he's passed away. He did pass away. Um, rest in peace. Um, yeah, and, he, and there was another DJ, uh, Manuel Bundy, <laughs> yeah. sort of had that similar style as well a little bit. Uh, uh, just a little bit more. He was a bit more soul, but more soul, yeah, soul yeah. based. I mean, Manuel definitely did. Those two. Yeah. If I ever saw their name on a flyer, like I was there. Yeah, like Manuel I, was a lot down at the Brits. Yeah. He was he'd often play lots down at the Brits on their sidebar and stuff. But yeah, amazing DJs. Also through here, you had young guys like Rob Salmon, who went on to live in New York okay. and record on Yoshitoshi Records. Nice. Uh, John Davis um, oh. was a great DJ, he played down here a lot. John I Davis, mean, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. still around, so he's he is an still author. around. He'll, he'll, he'll see this and be like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, for? he'll be correct and he'll be in the comments. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> some, some great DJs played in this space. And now it's a car park. Yeah, so Grant was like, he would. He would be able to DJ over in Course Lip, another little club on the side here, um, and then run over to the main room, <laughs> yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, and just keep, keep it mixed up so you see him <laughs> in both places. Um, but just the most infectious, amazing uh, mix of retro music. We're talking about 80s and, and dabbling into the 70s and then also into the 90s. It was freedom, you know, we would all go out here and we were dancing around and met heaps of people and it, and it was and it was fun people. It yeah. wasn't like, you know, it wasn't the cool crowd. It was just everybody having yeah. a good time. It was the great unwashed listen to a whole bunch of feel good stuff. Yeah. And like my set went from, I think, I think it was 10 o'clock start until 5 a.m. So, you know, it's a seven hour set. It's a, yeah, it's a, good, seven hour set. It's a seven hour set, playing, just casually every Wednesday. Playing 45s and 12 inches and album cuts, you know, and yeah. by the end of it, I was exhausted. But it was a great learning curve for me yeah. about how to try and put tracks together, how you could put tracks together, how you can move from place to place and jump from one pad to the next and what you're doing between, like, if you're gonna get from this song to that song, well, let's drop in this song in the middle and there's a nice little way to get there. Yeah. So it was real good for me, cutting my teeth, learning, you know, learning methods that I still use today. Yeah. even though we're a digital age, but yeah, it was cool. Oh yeah, there's a record store here, wasn't it? Yes, so there was a record store down here. Uh, was it called BPM? Yeah. BPM? Simon Grigg again, that was his record store. Yeah. So this wasn't your kind of go-to record store? Your other one was that one? Yeah, yeah, I was, I wasn't, I mean, I'd go in here, definitely go in here on new release day when they had orders come in. Yeah. Um, I think it was around the time when Greg Churchill released his BPM 01 mix CD right. and, and Roger Perry did his BPM 02 which I still love to this day. A couple of yep. great Kiwi dance albums there if you can get your hands on them. So I mean the architecture around these streets is kind of very kind of like Victorian or something. You don't really get many, most of the other, the rest of the city is not like this but so it's actually quite a cool little European vibe around here. Yeah it hasn't changed a lot. No, I mean they're all historic buildings. That, that occidental thing looks like it's about to fall over. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, um, so there's some stuff going on in these buildings here. Yeah, so we're on O'Connell Street, and yeah. that building was Baseline Records. That was right. a record store started by Grant Kearney and with a lending hand of Sam Hill. Yes. Yeah, what is it now? It's a nice little coffee shop. Hey guys, <laughs> we're doing a history of Auckland. This used to be a record store. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> 12 inches along the wall there. Yeah, yeah. Counter was here. Pinball machine there. <laughs> did this end up being, do you remember the Stomping Call guys? There was these guys that did like I remember trance that name. music. Yeah. And there was a hairdresser. Oh, that was Matt Demon. That was oh, next door. Demon. Yeah, that was Demon here. That was next door. That was here. That was this one. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, upstairs, yes. uh, up there somewhere was Squid. Yeah. I think that's, I went there before Retro. Okay, yeah, Squid yeah. was Mikey Havoc. Mikey Havoc had a lot to do with Squid. And yeah. uh, Nick D'Angelo, Simon Lyon, had a lot to do with that place. He did the cheap sex parties, which if you ever went to one, you can share in the comments about what happened. Because yep. I don't know because I never went. <laughs> but I heard lots of rumours about stuff and I'm not going to repeat yeah, those yeah, rumours. Yeah. So if you know and you were there, you can happily to, verbatim. Tell him, uh, yeah, put in the comments. Tell it to yeah. Um, yeah, Mikey Havoc, now let's talk a bit about him because he was kind of my entry into well he actually was more of a radio host for me so i used to listen to him on bfm back when i was like 14 15 and um to this day he's probably my favorite radio host like he was just he was just really clever and 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 he had a cool opinion about everything you know he's still <laughs> and, on radio eh? right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. i don't listen to much anymore <laughs> so. I mean, there's um, something special about that time when he was on B and yeah. the music that he was bringing to the people. And he was very much, I mean, he was very much a, a tune hound. Like he would, he'd get all the promos from all the record companies, but he knew, you know, he had a really good ear yeah. for a long period there. He had a great ear and he was introducing stuff to people that they'd never heard before. And, and you know, that goes a long way in DSU to people for quite a long time. You know, like mm. if, you, if you're the person sharing this incredible new, you know, brand new stuff out of the Chemical Brothers, you know, Big Beat, whatever it was, yeah. Mikey seemed to have it first. And because of the radio show, you know, he was the guy that was championing that sound. And yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, all power to him. He did a great job. I mean, you know, he really, he really brought dance music to the fore. Now, another person I used to listen to before I was in the, the clubbing scene was um, Grant Kearney. Yep, he Sample would do, G. Yep, so he, uh, Sample G. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday oh, or something. it's the Thursday night, the Chaos Tuesday. Techno Show on BFM. Yeah, and it was the Techno Show, and that was my thing. So, um, I would record it, obviously. Take play ready. Yep, yep. Yeah. And that was my fix. And it was, and it was cool, because you had to kind of hunt to find stuff, you know. That, that Chaos Techno Show was a great, um, a great Thursday night yeah. edition. I think it came on, it came on after Simon Grigg's BPM radio show. So you had Simon Grigg playing two hours of the latest out of his record store. 
and out of the box and then he had Grant and sometimes Sam and occasionally myself come in and do uh, the Chaos Techno show, which I think was just a one hour show. Yeah. Uh, featured all sorts of malarkey, including racing tips, which we didn't know anything about. <laughs> but yeah, Grant had a big part to play in um, much of the early dance movement in New Zealand. Like I say early, I mean, you know, electronic, especially into the things like the brain. Yeah. That was, you yeah. Know, that's a huge, that's a huge birth point or a huge pivot point for, you know, raves and yeah. dance parties in New Zealand. The Brain was actually one of my first gigs that I ever went to really. I think I was like 16, bottle of wine and a group of friends <laughs> and, and that was me man, I was gone. Right. Flight lounge, good morning. So, okay, we're in, we're in Fort Lane. It's a little bit busy right now because it's like vans and stuff doing all the loading things in but here we have our Flight Lounge but it's now called Sapphire. Flight Lounge was a great club. So Flight Lounge was owned by and operated by Chris Barron, Chris, yeah. who was a long time servant at Spy Bar, and him and his brother, uh, his brother was the carpenter, I think he put this thing together, helped put this thing together. Great club, uh, good un you know, un underground, walk down the stairwell, nice sound system, good DJ setup, good crowd. Yeah, I always, I always had a few good nights there, and this was Hitch. It was Hitch. Uh, Hitch was fun, man, because it was like, it was the cool hip hop club. Um, oh, yeah. Everyone would sort of end up here because I got into this whole hip hop thing in my 30s. I thought I was done with clubbing, and then I got a job filming in uh, Baccio. And no one was filming like that. We'd do like Facebook videos, and it was so popular. And we had a huge line, and that was um, the Smash Proof Boys. Well, Deech was kind of help oh, yeah. run it, and another guy called Steve, uh, Steven, who owned Baccio at that time. And um, for those who have forgotten, Smash Proof did that track. Uh, with Jim Woodmore, I mean, brother? Got, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was another era I, w I went through, and I was I was the white guy, in the, <laughs> the only white guy in the club, and I had the rejuvenated nightclubbing career. So this was Hitch, but I think before it was Hitch, yeah, I think it was Coco. Yes. Yeah. So I think Coco was Aiden Erawata's bar. Aiden Erawata used to manage Coast Bar, okay. used to manage uh, Caliber, and this was his spot that I think he started up. Uh, had a pool table in there. Nice furnishings, a nice place, a little getaway before or after clubbing. Yeah, real nice. So, uh, Roxy, um, sort of an upstairs thing. It's kind of like a cement dance floor. Pretty, still popular. Um, it's got, a, got the balcony around it. Really exciting when Roxy first, when we first got Roxy revealed, and it's got to be a good 10 plus years ago, but it had this whole New York feel about it, the high ceiling and a mm. you know, focused dance floor and a kick-ass sound system, which got to last for like two minutes before, hey, hey, that's still now to turn that down. Oh and it took something that was really exciting and just really, you know, really cut it off at the knees, which was a shame because we, you know, we were longing for something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, many, so many are closed. It even looks like a, a New York alleyway just out here, you know? Yeah. Now I've got stories about you turning up here in chains, in chains oh, looking yeah, like some kind of not. pimp with the limo, you and... Um, <laughs> um, Grant and um, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky. So you, Thank one, you. One day we went to this... Um, we, we decided to rent a limo and um, and go to town and, and basically you, pull up clubs. Just gonna rent a limo. <laughs> yeah. And we dressed up like these kind of pimps, and um, it was the best night, man. It was so much fun. <laughs> and um, we came to a club called uh, it's called Calneva, yep. and uh, it's just down here. I think it was just I think it was just another door down here. Very commercial, top forty, top forty dance, mm -hmm. yeah. huge DJ booth. I actually think. Shay bought me a remix of MC Hammer that he'd done today. <laughs> you forgot about that. I think I've still got that somewhere. Oh, okay. Because I lost um, it. I need to get it. Yeah. But yeah, again, a 9 to 3 set on a Friday and a Saturday here. Um, so that's a, another cool thing about Brian here is he, he was able to um, play retro, house music, uh, and then come over here and play sort of more of a commercial top 40, but kill it in all, in all of them. So that's why he's here today. <laughs> okay. No one else can do that. You guys are all in your lanes. He's lame. Oh, I wouldn't say no one else. <laughs> no, no. Well, look. No one else wants to do it. I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> Provador yeah. is still here. Yeah. I mean, it, it's and no disrespect to people involved with it, but it is like the cockroach of Auckland nightlife. You cannot kill it. It just yeah. and I think the soundtrack remains the same since '87. Oh my god. <laughs> These guys are. And it's always been here. Um, and look, if you were trying to go out and meet somebody and you had no luck, you would end up at um, Provider Hall, we used to call it. These guys have outlasted so many clubs, so kudos to them. Yeah. 
and a place where you can always go have some fun and I think that's a really valuable thing because you know it's, it's hard for nightclubs to stay around the noise complaints the city keeps changing them around them the, the liquor licenses the, it's, it's a hard um, it's a hard business this used to be something massive it was where the sports cafe filmed what was so it called? it was a float float that's right and then that was a century it's a great venue it had the big balcony the big uh, what do you call it terraces the big uh, upstairs you could look down on the floor yeah massive venue but now this is cool. I mean, the, 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 when I was in the, um, the hip hop era, um, Lenium overtook this, and they, he came from Bachia. They had all the good DJs, and then they all split off into their own. They had like a bit of a I disagreement. Kearney did a, a hip hop R&B super club there once, right. which was a big big thing for him. And I think there was also an elevator to take you up to another bar, yeah, uh, a little sort of private bar. Yeah, uh, yeah, only a couple, only a couple of stories, only, only like one or two stories up. It had multiple rooms. It was, it was cool, you know, and it was probably the biggest club of in, in New Zealand. Yeah. Now behind us is a very tall. Yeah, well, it's up. only four, five stories, but um, uh, it, um, it did house an amazing place that I went to a lot. And Grant, did you play? Yeah, I did. I did some. I did some. A number of nights up there. Most of them were the um, were the early Our House nights. Yeah. Uh, and some other events. Adam Bennett's early High Life events oh, are up there as well. Bennett, yeah. Um, friend so, of my friend of mine, Parry, did his book launch up here for plenty more fish in the CBD. That was fun. Right. Um, but but this yeah. place was called Coast. It Coast was called Bar. Coast Bar, yeah. And you'd access around the corner. There was an elevator. Yeah, some great parties. Had multiple rooms. We can give that a go. Oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Multiple rooms. Uh, the black the black room at the back with that uh, balcony that everyone wondered if they could jump off and make, make it to the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, <laughs> terrible floor. The dance floor itself. Um, and the main room was, yeah, was the bouncy, a bit had a bit of good. And no one really knew what the limit was, but we were, everyone would talk about it. And you know, on a really busy night, you'd be able to see the, um, the floor flexing. Yeah, and the fish, you can see the fish tanks. The fish were often, uh, the fish were obviously, ob often moving around. Okay. Probably not gonna work, but we'll try. We'll go with Hit a button and say hi to a receptionist at like a real estate or something. Um, yeah, Coast Bar, uh, incredible venue, and, and the licensing then you can go to a sunrise, and being up there on the other balcony and seeing the sunrise was you know, one of those really amazing moments, playing to that crowd. Seriously. Where did it go? What happened? Like, I guess it's just business, yeah, so this essentially is now the <laughs> New Zealand oh, Foreign Affairs. Is that you or is it <laughs> Coast yeah. That's long gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're doing a tour of sort of uh, nightclubs of New Zealand uh, oh. that have been, that have gone, you know. Yeah. But, yeah and now, was it the fifth uh, floor? Was it the sixth floor? No, you need to go to the eighth floor. It was the eighth. I'm uh, yeah. 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 Let us hit eight, so we'll give it a try. Yeah. We'll give it a try. Right. Here we are. This is the eighth floor. You walk in here, and there's a, there a private room here. Yeah. And you walk in that way to the main room. And you could also go that way to, there was also a private room and you get access through to the black bar. So one, wow. two, three, four different rooms, yeah. Um, should we have a look at the bathrooms? <laughs> okay, if we use your bathroom. Yeah, um, Grant's an old DJ and, and we're making a little tour of old bars of New Zealand and this used to be Coast Bar, which is a huge nightclub. Um, yeah, so we're doing like a vlog about it. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, bye, thank you. Look at that. So, so I don't even know, what, what is this place? <laughs> Oh, construction company. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, this was this was a private room. This was the VIP. This yeah. was a private room that didn't always open. And but out there was the black bar. You had a glimpse of the view just over there. I remember the bathrooms being here. And there were some steps oh, up yeah. in the black bar. Oh. The original bathrooms. These look remodeled. They do. Although, yeah, the layout's pretty similar. There's probably a, a lot of um, things being consumed through orifices in there. Um, and if you, if you poke the camera in there, that's the main room. And there's the balcony. You see the balcony up the, yeah. through those dark curtains. This is where the, um, this is where the um, dance floor was. Okay. The yeah, and this is, this is an open plan. So there's the black bar over here. The, the fish tank was over there. Look at the view. This whole thing was a nightclub. It, yeah. This wouldn't happen anymore. And check that balcony all the way around. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. The viaduct was, it was more of a commercial vibe down here that you wouldn't really go, if you're like real kind of muso, muso, like you kind of listen to a lot of DJs, you wouldn't be down here, but you still have a great night. Now, there was one place you could always go to. It could be a Monday night and the whole city is dead. Oh, and yeah. yet, yeah. Danny Dolan's. That's still here. Is open. And it's still here. 
The formula for those venues is pretty, is pretty simple. It's like, you know, be, be the lowest common denominator, play music to as many people as you can and, you know, yeah. just make it fun. I mean, there's, there's lots of demand for that. So, it's nothing, should we have a look inside? You know, I've never been inside. Never. You've never, never been, been to Danny been, Dolan's? Never been to Danny Dolan's. Oh my god. I'm going to stand standard here while you film. <laughs> this oh. is Danny Dolan's. Alright, I'll come in. Hey, how you going? I just... I just disintegrated. <laughs> <laughs> um, what year did you guys open? <laughs> roughly? Really? Roughly? What era? Or? I am... Um, let me see, it was probably about... 20... Six years ago, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. It, it, yeah, before my time here. Yeah, long yeah. enough, long enough to say forever, right? Yeah, you're Irish. Forever, yeah. So, is it like a family business or? It's not. Yeah, it, it's not a family business. Um, it is owned by an Irish man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. Yeah. Now I always love this place, um, and it's good to see it actually hasn't changed at all. <laughs> you gotta be careful how you say that. No, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> the floor's got holes in it. No, 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 like it's... We've, we've given it a lick of paint now and again, and yeah, yeah, yeah. done it up a bit, but it's it's definitely the same Danny Dillon's. Yeah, I mean, it's built it's built really well. Hey, what we now know as the cellar bar is part of Danny Dillon's was not this previously. Um, this used to be a place called Spy Bar. Now, I, I didn't really go here that much, but um, Grant was a resident, right? Yeah. Yeah, for a number of years, I would play the Saturday closing set, which in those days was starting at 5 a.m. and going till around 10. And in December, in December, you'd often push to around. Who starts their well. set at 5 a.m.? Well, this like, is the thing. I was, at, I was at Sky City at Bar 3 until 3 a.m. I'd go home, have a shower, grab a banana, <laughs> come down here and play from five until close and then and then just go home and just fang it like on the couch be like that, that's done but yes i mean starting to see that five was great i mean and the place was full of you know hospitality people would come in people other djs had finished their gig you had this place going till 10 in the morning you had caliber up on k road going till 10 in the morning and that yeah. was kind of like you're either camp caliber or you're a camp spy great yeah time. i think you know i had a gripe with the bouncer here once and that's why i never yeah, they, they had the whole thing. They had a membership members card. Members only. Thing? Well, they did. They had a member. They had a membership card, but it became yeah. the thing of saying, you know, if there was something about you they didn't, they, yeah. they, they, they took exception to, or they thought that you weren't the per person they wanted to have in, they'd ask for your member card. And yeah. It was a polite way of saying, move yeah. along. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, I had a go at that bouncer because they advertise on the radio a gig. So I right. go, okay, I go to the gig. It's members only. I'm like, no, no, no. It's on the radio. It's a gig. And you can't. So I was like, everyone, everyone has a, story, a spy story like that. I was like, eh. Uh, but I did go back in there a few times. Um, you know, it was that kind of, it was the socialites of Auckland. Right? You know, yeah, you definitely. You'd have, you have all blacks, all blacks would go down there after a test match and be unruly and get thrown out and yep. you know, do stuff. And wallaby players was caught doing various bits and pieces, all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we're, uh, Grant was just talking about uh, Grand Circle, okay, which is part of this whole building complex here, which was called St. James. Um, and it's a huge theatre that hosted obviously I mean it's like probably a hundred years old or something it, it, currently it's um, condemned like they've, they've had problem with this there's a petition um, to, to keep it running and um, hopefully that goes through you know it's, it's a really hard fix though a lot of, you have to do all the wiring again it's millions and millions of dollars Brian was a resident DJ when we when he took um, retro the Wednesday night retro that we originally talked about yeah, to the top floor um, up to Grand Circle, which was a really fun venue. It was great. It was kind of in this antique building. But if you know how many stairs it was or how many flights of stairs it was, please feel free to comment and let us know. Uh, but carrying 40 kgs of records up those things was not fun. The main theatre uh, hosted, like, we would have had Derek Carter. Uh, oh, it had everyone came through. There was big gigs there. We had, like, the uh, Deep Heart and yeah, Funky. Yeah, Deep Heart and Funky together. I think it was one of the Tim's ones. The Owl House went in there. Um, what was that one? Chemical? I think it was... Chemistry, chemistry. It was like a, another trance one, like different things happening in different rooms, like heaps of multi-venue because of the size. So I've got, I've got a little story here actually. Now they were, they were doing one of those big gigs. I think it was nice and early, okay. And I was with uh, these guys, and they were a little bit dodgy, okay. And we didn't have tickets, and they said, "Well, we can get you in." And they took me over here somewhere. There's must. I, I don't know what you can see over there, but. There's a door, right? Yeah, there is a side door, you're right, right back here. Yeah. Yep. So we went in this little side door, there's about wow. 10 of us. Yeah, there's about 10 of us. And um, we, um, we climbed through this side door, right? 
it was the middle of the night, the, the, the party was happening, and we went through all these back corridors, and it was like, doosh, 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 and we eventually were climbing through little, little, uh, like, it was like a cupboard in a wall, and then we're under the stage, right? I thought you were these guys, you know, okay. I think what you're talking about is going backstage past the green rooms and then came out. Nah, this was, okay. there was no backstage, it was <laughs> under the stage, so we, um, so I've got witnesses as well, Ricky was with me, and we were under the stage, we could see people's feet through this vent. And then eventually we opened the vent and we, we came out to the dance party and like, let's pretend you're the DJ, you're, you're nice and early. Bevan, hey, Bevan hey, yeah. yeah. And we just came up out of the floor and then it, we came up underneath him at the front of the stage, here's the stage, and, the, and he just did a drop. So it was like, ah, da, 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 da. and we appeared in the middle of the dance floor and those guys, the DJ saw us and like pointed at us and were like, yeah. And it was just the best entrance I've ever had to a, um, to a dance party. Um, oh, watch there's a camera as well. Yeah. Uh, we're making a little uh, uh, podcast, walking podcast about... Oh, no, what's the other, what's the other company? Fair go. Fair, fair, fair go? No, no, not fair go. <laughs> Do you think Auckland's known for its nightlife? Like, I don't know. It, it's not like a city, like you go down to Christchurch, right, and... Everything's laid out easy. You can walk around. There's like little sort of walking streets, and you yeah, kind of a little like bit disjointed here, a little bit disjointed. It's disjointed, yeah, um, for nightlife. But um, there was some great. I think what made it cool was the DJs. You know, we had great DJs um, in in Auckland, bringing in all the music for us. You know. Yeah, I don't know if Auckland nightlife. Uh, thanks, man. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, but, um, it is. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was well known for nightlife outside of New Zealand. Maybe within, no. maybe within New Zealand it was like, yeah, go to Auckland, there's plenty of things to do, there's always something happening. Mm. And I think through the 2000s and 2010s, there were a lot of events and parties, there still are, but you know, they've become more fractured and more, you know, genres fracture and, you know, and, and split and go places and do different things. And mm. I think, you know, as, I think as anything, you know, gets bigger, it tends to break up. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we had a bit of a golden age there for a good decade where it was like, this is pretty, and again, you could be easily looking at it through, you know, through our rose-colored spectacles because it, we were experiencing it mm. at, you know, at that time. And I always say to people who say to me, "Oh, it's not the same anymore." I'm like, "Well, it is still really good out there. There is still lots to do, but it just doesn't it doesn't appeal to to you yeah, because yeah. Yeah. because you're the age that you are, and yeah. and they're not trying to cater for you because that's not what they're that's not you know. Yeah. There is still there is still a demand for something for that age group, and I often find that's it's lacking. Yeah. But no, I definitely think, you know, if someone expected the scene to stay loyal to them for decades, then they have expected too much out mm. of their scene. What was your favorite kind of era, you reckon, or, or, or part? Well, I mean, pre-DJing, it was definitely growing up in the 80s and listening to incredible you know, bands that were introducing elements of electronica into into their production, you know, mm. the Depeche Modes, the New Orders, the even Erasure and Pet Shop Boys, um, you know, yeah. artists like that who were bringing electronic sounds in. It was like these synth sounds were incredible. Like Kaja Goo Goo, um, just you know, that was a really it was a, it was a new sound and it was exciting and that kind of drew me towards you know where I ended up, which is we can know. hop out here. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's always about the next record. Yeah, it's always, yeah about right. the, it's always about the next record. The next record that sends chills down your spine. And you're like, I can't wait to play that on the radio, or in a club, or in a bar, or where you know. Now, uh, K Road is is a kind of bit of a melting pot of culture up here. Um, you get all sorts of people up here, and um, you know, kind of cool boutique shops with like vintage clothes. I'm I'm, I'm glad it, in some ways it hasn't changed much because, I mean, the white lady has. A, a, St. Kevin's Arcade. Yeah, you went to the White Lady. I was, I was putting out <laughs> yeah. St. Kevin's Arcade. St. Kevin's Arcade. Um, <laughs> there was a club here, and it's now called Whammy Bar, but yeah. previously was... It was Calibre. Philly. How you doing, mate? How you doing? Good to see you, mate. <laughs> uh, it's, Uncle, it's Uncle Phil, yes. uh, legendary Auckland Wellington house DJ. So this is the door, yeah. now called Whammy, but back in the day called Calibre. And... Uh, yeah, a true icon of Auckland club life. I mean, if you, if you were there, you know. If you weren't, it was downstairs, uh, incredible sound system, ran very late, all sorts of shenanigans, was expected of you. <laughs> it wasn't just permissible, it was expected. Um, what kind of music? Uh, predominantly house. 
but there were some drum and bass nights. I think they, um, I think they might have been called camouflage, and they basically decked the whole place out with like camo stuff around the ceiling. Like they did some incredible work in the club. But yeah, predominantly house music. Uh, Greg had a Greg had a home here playing the closing set on Saturday nights. Often it was the place to play. If you made it to Calibre, you'd made it. Do you want to ask um, Phil about his favourite memory of Calibre? Phil, favorite memory of Calibre? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, I do. Wow. Man, seeing seeing Brett Johnson there, yeah. uh, Honey Dijon, Mark Farina, but but uh, definitely Swanee uh, yeah. during the last song. You know, oh, his right. connection the more I get. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, and listening to Dick Johnson's uh, oh no, Ian Pauley's Piha. Oh, right. Down there as well. You know, that always yeah, a lot, a lot. I could go on and on yeah, and on. Yeah. But, but um, it's always this yeah. Um, Iconic clubs in, in Auckland or around the world, they're, they're, they're always on time. Yeah. And I'm just lucky, I'm just lucky that I was there. Up and behold in this building, like yeah. it was three or four stories up. It was a you know it's a bit of a stair. You have to first have to get up here and then you gotta go up these stairs. But you're in this really cool little club called Kuja Lounge. And uh, it was a staple for me actually for about a year or two there. And it had um, it was it was when a, a sort of Resurgence of like music from you'd even get sort of a bit more worldly music in there. It was a lot of house based music, but you'd hear stuff a bit more soul, you'd hear a bit more um, some Latin, some Latin, funk, Latin, yeah. and and it's like so often someone there on like some congas or something. Yeah. So, and your, and your DJ might be sitting down sometimes yeah. just because it's kind of chill. It was like, yeah, but it was very, very popular. Oh, is that the door? Yeah, yeah. well, it's still the original door. Um, and it, look, it's cool, these old, old historic buildings. Yeah, I really didn't follow Kuja closely enough, but I knew that it was very popular, had a great following, was always busy. And you know, the guys who played here knew their sound and did it really well. But yeah, Bachi, a great venue. Uh, I didn't play there often myself. I think I played a couple of private parties in there, but um, it's just a very popular room. Really hard sometimes for clubs that are upstairs to be successful. Often, you know, it's that walking down into a club that seems to seems to work best, but um, this was one that was upstairs, worked well. Wow, it's, uh, where, where is it? Yeah, it's like, I couldn't, so, I couldn't locate it for you. It's, it's, so I used to work at Baccio. Best GPS on where Baccio was? There's some stairs, there's the stairs. Oh, there this you is go. It. Oh, is that Kiss up there? Yeah. Kiss yep. up there, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should we, go, should, we go, should we have a go? Yeah, we'll, we'll try. Try going. Um, now, these used to be the stairs of Baccio and uh, Kiss. Right. Uh, it sort of changed names, eventually the whole thing became Baccio. Right. Um, and I had a job here as a, um, as like a videographer for a hip hop club. And now, we have tenants. <laughs> and it's not meal tenants. Oh, okay, business office. Um. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I'm doing a, a vlog of Auckland City and old nightclubs, and this used to be Baccio Bar. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um, I was wondering if we could just have one minute to walk through. Yeah? Oh, great. Thank you very much. All right, so this would used to be Kiss Bar, and there was a big bar right here in the middle, and the booze down the back here. Same. Same, same difference. I can't remember the roof. It was all black then. It was painted black. Yeah. But I don't even know. Man, this floor. So there was Kiss and there was Angle was across the road as well. There's another upstairs one. Angle was over there. The road there. You know what? To be honest, this could be Original floor? a different venue. Oh. I mean, it, unless the, I mean, those stairs were exactly the same. So. <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's yeah. Uh, Thank you. Com com comments welcome if you recognise this floor. Yeah. In that, in that view, then you can you can help. Can us you out identify here. us? I mean, like there was a stage over there, and this is where the bar was. I just remember the DJ booth was some bespoke like um, montage of like old glass that had been stuck on it that was around the DJ. That's all I remember. I mean, they renovated a few times. So I'm only. Thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, Las Vegas night. This place has been here for yeah. years. So if you look out and show the iconic, um, yeah. without getting hit by a car. But she's had a she's had a she's had a booby upgrade. 
There's some signs been here for... Oh yeah, it's yeah. been repainted. Yeah, she's definitely had a, a, a job. So when I was in third form at Auckland Grammar School in yeah. the 80s, I walked past here on a, on a school trip. We walked here, past here, down here, and we were all giggling, giggling <laughs> ourselves crazy about that. So yeah, it's, you're talking like 86, 87. Yeah, been there a long time. And it was a strip club back in the yeah. day. It's not anymore, it's now a venue. Yeah, Sin is again, not a club I've played in, but absolutely iconic in the late ninth, mid to late 90s. Um, would go very, very late. It was very, very dark and was very, very fun. Um, stories of Big Pun setting the DJ booth on fire, or Grant Kearney setting the DJ booth on fire, oh, fire. Big Pun falling asleep at the decks. Um, I mean, there's, those are some of the stories we'll tell on camera, but yeah. Um, sinners, yeah. yeah. Well respected, well loved. The Jones Bar was really cool. It was a checkered dance floor, so it was like you're on a chessboard. It was like you're in the... Um, yeah, giant chessboard. You'd go up the stairs, there's a large lounge area with a bar, and then you could go up to the side, and that was where the dance floor and the DJ was set up. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, might be there. It feels like it feels Jones Barish esque. Um, yeah. I was up a stairwell of that. Are you DJ'd here? I did a few times. Yeah, I had a little residency going on. I remember yeah. Big Pun. There's that name again. We left me 190 players last record, and then he ducked down. He ducked away, and the track was like a like a, a big record. Was like fitted what we were doing. Then all of a sudden, it stops and breaks into the Chicago riff for like a minute of. Hold me now. So it's like he's sitting there pissing himself laughing. I'm standing up in front of a dance floor while Chicago's playing. I'm like, yeah, very good. I still owe you for that one. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so that, um, Jones cool Bar club. was a really cool club. Um, I, I just, it was comfortable that, and good music. Yep. It's spacious. Friendly. Okay, this is one of, going back to one of the earliest clubs up here. And um, yeah, here. Yeah, now this, uh, I'll currently call the studio. And, and this is a cool live vi uh, music venue right now, but previously... It's been so many things. Look, the layout is almost, almost identical, almost. But it was, originally there was a club on Albert Street called Staircase? Staircase. It's called Staircase. And it was a gay club and it moved from there to here. Mm -hmm. And then Staircase became like a, uh, an everyone venue. Yep. And then it became a name change from Staircase to Don't Tell Mama. Yes. And then it changed to DTM. Easy, that one. And then it changed to, very clever, 340K Road. How'd they work that one out? And then the studio, I think is where it is now. So many incarnations, but Big venue, couple of rooms, wooden floors, just seems to work. It's like, you know, you can hold like a thousand, anywhere from 500 to a thousand in here as your venue, and it's, you know, it's kind of iconic. I threw a couple of parties in here. Yep. Some of them went well, some of them didn't go so well. Now, uh, did you ever play to any celebrities over, over the years? Uh, nah, I think MC, I remember MC Hammer came into a club I was playing at called The Sight. It was going way back. Oh, The Sight, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what my brother used to talk about. MC Hammer played a concert, came in with his dancers. They came up in the DJ booth and said, can you play this track? And then he did a little floor show and it was kind of fun. Oh, that was awesome. Um, but there's, I mean, yeah. There's been, I played alongside a bunch of DJs, which have been cool, locals and internationals, but. Well, okay, we've gone around Auckland. Um, there's a huge history of, of great nightlife that me and, me and Grant have actually experienced and it's been awesome to share it with you guys. Hope there's something in here that, something nostalgic that's kind of invoked memories with you guys. Um, Chuck in your comments what you, what some of your favorite experiences were and correct us on any info. Look, yeah. this is just coming off. Just off the cuff. Yeah, off your detail and your uh, stories have been amazing, Grant. That's so, been great fun. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, thank guys. You, Thanks for this far. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. man.